What up, y'all? Welcome back to the Black Top Podcast. We're a full house tonight, but we're online. Boys, how we doing? Be better if the Raptors didn't, didn't shake the bed for Amen. almost every game and have to try and come back from 30 points down. I'm not going to lie. I've, I've been, I've been like kind of slowly becoming a part of the, the fandom. I, I really like that Raptors team, but, you know, the Bucks, the Bucks had to do it to them. Jay, yeah, you I don't know. Screwed raps. <laughs> <clears throat> Celtics just became. Oh. He froze up a little bit there. He was like. Talking about how the Celtics just uh, firmly took control of the top seed, though. The Celtics. He was saying the Celtics are the worst team of all time. And that Jason Tatum is the 24th best player in the league. And Chris Stapps Porzingis is not a unicorn, but a donkey. (laughs) (laughs) Chin's like, man, what is going on with my damn computer? No, but that was a good game. I mean, they all really came down to the last few possessions. But man, Al Horford has the sauce, yo. (laughs) For real. (laughs) Oh, God. I think it was what him and Brooke are like the only I think 35 year olds. I it was some kind of like those LeBron stats where it's like nobody except so and so has ate chicken and beef at the same time, you know, you know what I mean? But you know, Al Horvath had a really solid game for sure. But you know, while Christian's figuring that out, man, you think five games was appropriate, Rube? At this point, I'm not okay. Like, I want to pull it back. Like, at this point, we're not even surprised, though, right? I was surprised that he only got, he only got five games. Yeah, I was surprised he only got five games. I was thinking in the seven to eight range. I was saying at least he's he's gonna at least get two, but I don't know how. Like, because we've seen punches thrown in the league, and then guys get one game suspension. And I'm like, damn. Like, if this was a David Stern time, guys were getting like a quarter of the season taken away. Um, yeah, I mean, Stackjack probably lost an All Star game because of that. Yeah, and so it's like five games seems really small, and considering Draymond's history of hurting other dudes, like I thought he would have gotten seven to eight, but I don't know. Have you, have you think... seen on Twitter or X where everybody's saying at the end of Draymond's career, it's not even going to be basketball highlights? <laughs> it's just highlights like a really super kind of like him just getting <laughs> into see fights with dude. It? Pardon? Have you seen it? Like, there's people who've like replied to that tweet with two and a half minute videos. Of yeah, just them, yeah, I saw a lot of the nuts. compilations. Man, it's nutty. Cause like, here's the thing. I feel like there's almost a, a sense of uh, denial, I guess, when it comes to the Warriors, where Draymond still thinks they're like the big bad Warriors. Nobody wants yeah. to see him. Nobody wants to smoke. But you know, that's not the case anymore. Uh, I mean, Minnesota, ooh, they're looking good for sure. Yeah. We're definitely a little wrong on them there. But overall, I, I think it's just that we're starting to see the decline. You know, that's the only way you can really put it. They're still a solid team, no doubt. But yeah, I, I feel like Draymond's just trying to still maintain that rep as like, you know, the enforcer of the league, I guess. But yeah, Christian Christian said his audio's good. Up. Chin man, firmly first in the Eastern Conference. How you feeling about your boys? <clears throat> to be honest, I think it was a pretty like impressive win considering we were missing two of the best starters on the team to begin with. Mm-hmm. I sure. mean, to, I, I got Derek White on my fantasy team, and I, oh, I've Derek been White of, cleaned like, up today. Him, but, yeah, <clears throat> but he dropped twenty. He dropped twenty seven today, and I was like, damn. Maybe I'm not dropping him for now. For but, sure. Yeah. So I, I find that the Celtics have really figured out a system where at, in, at any given night, like they have someone that can step up. And I think that's so important to just like regular season play. And I think when it comes to the playoffs, like it's going to be very different. I mean, in this sample size, just seeing like how good they can like turn it on. If like, say Jason Tatum is not playing good. If Jalen Brown's not playing good. If Derek White can give you twenty seven on like an off night for your stars, like it's pretty, it's pretty difficult. For sure, yeah. To that point of like the system, 
I feel like them and the the Nuggets are the team that are like kind of all in simpatico at the moment. I I feel like they're the most like sim sim. Yeah, I, I think they're the team that's like most like gelled together so far, for sure. But alrighty, y'all, we got a lot more to talk about from that. Before that, though, got a little quiz for you boys. So this is prior to tonight's games, but. There are six players shooting 50, 40, 90. Can y'all name them? Six guys. Steph Curry. Steph is not. He's slightly out of there. I think he's shooting like 49.3% from like the field. I think Luca is one of them. Luca was, but when I checked like earlier, I think he had like a bad game the other night. Is Kyrie one? No, Kyrie's another one where it's like they're like really, really close. They're like a few shots off. Jeez. Uh, here's, Devin here's, Booker? No. Here's the one hint I'll give you. There's like one all-star, and then the rest are like role players. Role players? Hmm. Kristaps Porzingis is one. Kristaps Porzingis is not one. Interesting. Right, right team though. I will, I'll give you that one. That's that's the right team for one of them. <clears throat> is it is it Drew? No. Is Drew hitting 50, 40, 90? Further down the pecking order. Derek worker. White. No. Derek White. Oh, Further is down. it Peyton Pritchard? The other white guy. Oh, Sam Hauser. Yeah, Sam Hauser's one. Okay. Oh yeah, he was shooting lights out against Toronto the other uh, you know yeah. last Sam, week. Sam, Sam, Sam's definitely um, a double. Who else? Am I thinking Tyrese Maxey's one. He's another guy where like it's like forty nine point three. He's right there. Yeah. What the hell is up with these point threes? Round up by the suckers. For real. Um. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> What's the shooting fifty forty ninety? <clears throat> okay, give us the give us the teams. Okay, so the remaining five. All right, so you got the Celtic out the way. So you have the Bucks, the Thunder, the Timberwolves, two Timberwolves actually. And then a pacer. Pacers is that? Wow, is that Buddy? No. Who else could be? Oh, is it Ty? No, Tyrese is an All Star, so it could be Tyrese. No, is it? Is yeah, that, it is yeah. Tyrese. How is one of them? It is Tyrese. Yeah, it is Tyrese. Oh, not Toby. He's, he's not playing lights out. You see the last two games? He's got like thirty-one assists on zero turnovers. Oh yeah, like he's that. he's dogging right now. Hundred percent, absolutely insane. All right, uh, so you got the pacer out the way. Yeah, Chet. Then you got um, a buck and two wolves. The buck. Who's the buck? Is it? Is it Mike Conley? Mike Conley's one of the wolves, yeah. And the other... Is it Anthony? Is it no, 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 he's an all-star. So, is... Oh, who is shooting lights out on that team? Is it slow-mo? Close, but no. Is it not? Is it? Uh, is it not? Yeah, Nasri is the other yeah, one. Yeah. Okay. All right, last one. Uh, he's a buck. He's a uh, he's a role player though, so he's not like. Is it Malik Beasley? No. Oh, he was just shooting lights out against. The yeah, Raptors, Malik. So. Honest, Malik might have actually shot himself into it based off today. <laughs> yeah. Campaign. Yeah. Campaign is the <laughs> last one. Yeah, he's shooting nice too. I yeah. mean. <clears throat> Which you know, last that's last good, little last little aside before we get into like our first month awards, which is what the main thing point of this podcast today is gonna be. Who would you guys say have like ugly jumpers? But that shit goes in. All time. Oh. Oh man. Sean Marion. Cam- <laughs> Sean- yeah. Sean- that's the first one. Yeah. <laughs> that's gotta be the first one. Ron Artest is a pretty nasty looking one where yeah. it's like he's like fisting it. He's like shooting it like Yeah. This. Yo, you know who's like who shoots like a Tito? Who? Joe Ingles. <laughs> oh, yeah, Joe, like- Joe Joe takes it like from the back here. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Me, me, me personally, I think like before you said all time, like the person I realized who doesn't have a nice form, but he always hits his shot is Cat. Like his form does not look like yeah, very clean. Oh, I think like but all big men have like it's, it's very straight. Yeah. Yeah, but his shots always be going in. Even even Jokic's is like 
right here, and then he like he's like here, yeah. It's like a cattle. He he kind of cranks it back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he got he cranks that thing, bro. It's like a slingshot. For that sure. thing's like the old like uh, what's the trebuchets like back in the day, bro. He like in nineteen. You no, know, you know who Yoki sh- shoots like? He shoots like Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> For real? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, bro. Manny Pacquiao. No, Sean Mary is definitely uh, a good one. That's the one I was thinking of. Shane Batty didn't have a very nice jumper. Like his his was like kind of like here. And uh Reggie Miller definitely had an ugly jumper, but Ooh, that stuff went in all yeah. the time. Yeah. Um Damn, who else had an ugly jumper that just was cash? That's actually hard now you think about it. Damn. Yeah. Kind of, I feel like we named most of like the people. Yeah. I'd say Lamelo is up there to be honest too. Oh yeah, Lamelo's got like Lamelo shoots it like how little kids shoot. Shoots it like from his chest. Yeah. Hey, yeah, SGA's got a weird here weird hitch in his jumper too. SGA yeah. and Tyrese Halliburton, both of them have oh, weird Hallie's, hitches. Oh, Halley's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a much, big one. Yeah, his is his is much more apparent than um much more apparent than uh SGA's but SGA's is is like he's got a weird hitch and he has a stop point where it's like there and then he does a little release where it's not a very smooth jumper and it's weird cuz his game is so smooth and then once he release once he pulls for the shot there's like a little hitch in it. Yeah. I think that's why he does a lot of his work off the dribble. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dylan Brooks, man. He's been shooting lights out with, with the Houston Rockets. This he was year. like, like 50, he like was like 60 50 like earlier this year. Bro, he shoots like this. Hey, but as we were saying, as long as that shit goes in. It's like JBL, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Alrighty, y'all. So we're about a month into the season been a lot of great basketball going on there might be some teams that we feel are completely out of it that could end up you know in the plan who knows let's start here though six man of the year who y'all got this is a very highly coveted award i feel i feel like this should be named the jamal crawford award for sure the six man of the year who y'all got for this I think off the top of my head, uh, but I, I don't know how it would contest because of like restrictions. I just think the best player that's been coming on and off the bench, all depending. Chris Paul is up there, but I think he still falls into a starting lineup player. I need to. I need to think about this one. Has he? Ruben has he star- how many? Yeah. How many games has CP CP's started? CP's maybe started, started like games. two of the ten. Or three, if you count yesterday. What's the eligibility again? It's like you have to. It's like as long as you, as long as you're at least over half. Over half. So you got to be at least forty. What forty two games off the bench this year? I mean, hmm. Karis Levert just had his first start a couple days ago, no? Mm. And then he's been he's been in the starting lineup, or has he been off back on the bench? Feel like he's been. He had a big game off the bench not too long ago. Like he leads, I was looking it up earlier. He leads the league in uh, bench points. Yeah. So you saying Karis? You saying the boy? It's tough, man. I mean, for me, I would right now. I'd probably say CP, just because they're winning the minutes without Steph on the floor. Yeah. And I think like the impact he's had, like he's also leading. You know, I think he's the league leader in assists off the bench, too. Um, So, I think I might have to give it to CP at the moment. CP, I can definitely see that. Because, yeah, their first time in history, they're winning the the non-Steph minutes. For me, though, I feel like this is Malik Monk's award. You know, he's a guy Mm -hmm. that I think is, like, fully naturalized to the six-man role. It's, like, big, too, because he still closes games. But, you know, he's averaging, like, I think he, he was, like, the only guy outside of, like, Malcolm Brogdon who was, I think, top five in both points per game and assists per game coming off the bench. But, you know, when you look at, like, how that Kings team is looking, who they're going to rely on, you know, when De'Aaron Fox has been out for the past few games, Malik Monk has really picked up the slack there. 
And even that was still coming off the bench, guys. I guess because like they want him to stay locked into that, like the rhythm of that. But for me, I think it's got to be Malik Monk for sure. That's fair. Who do you got, Chin? Yeah, I think I still got Chris Paul too, honestly. I think his numbers and productivity will probably increase to a point where he'll be in more contention. But I think definitely being an assist leader off the bench is like huge. And mm. I think if you're going to probably, you know, I'm not one to dive into plus minuses, but I'd say Chris Paul definitely falls into like net positives every game if i had to guess and i feel like once his like shooting splits start to regress back to the norm or progress more so i'd say i I feel like yeah he'll the the case will feel more like cemented for sure absolutely i I gotta throw in another guy i think like i'm just looking at his advanced stats right now like his impact on the floor. Can I guess I mean, who it his... is? Because I feel like I know who you're thinking of. Yeah, no, I was going to say Tim Hardaway on the Mavs. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because, like, I mean, right now they're currently what? They're, I didn't think that they were going to be 9 3 to start the year. They're hooping. And he's obviously, he's averaging, he's the second leading scorer off the bench in the league right now at 17 and a half. Mm-hmm. So, don't, I mean, he's. Don't worry. They'll be 41 and 41 by the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll be shocked if they manage to hit forty one and forty one. I think uh, they're they're looking really good, man. That's yeah. a, I think they're like firing on all cylinders right now. I just feel like their team is, in terms of the fit right now, the the guys that they brought in, and like if let's just hope Derek Lively stays alive, stay or stays alive, stays. He's been, he's stays been holding healthy. his own though. Yeah. No, he's been really good. No, he's been really good. Like so, I mean. But yeah, he's he's but, pretty much what they've needed. Yo, y'all know who got his first his first like legit regular season minutes today? Who's that? Our Canadian man. Keontae George? No, 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 no talk about no, for the Keontae Mavs. George played his first Keontae George, I oh, think, uh, started for the first time last Oh uh Omax. Yeah, yeah. yeah Omax got his first O-Max, burn. Yeah. Let's see how'd he do. You know, seven minutes, two, two, and one. That's not terrible. She. But... <laughs> you give him the MVP already. Hundred percent, man. That's a future All Star right there. Oh, but but I agree. I I think the Mavs are a team that are just brewing. You know, they yeah. I think they have everything to really be one of those upper echelon teams in the West. And we've seen like recently, there's been a lot of really good offenses. So it's not necessarily the defense that'll be the be all and end all, because we you know whenever you have Luca. You're always going to give your team a chance. He's one of those guys, but I think yeah, the guys they brought in this year, it's it's looking promising for sure. Yeah. All right, MIP. Because I, I Maxi. Yeah, I was going to say I think this, it's Tyrese this is Maxi. pretty consensus. Yeah. Because I mean, uh, yeah, a fifty piece, insane. Yeah, he looks good, man. He looks so good, and uh, it's funny because I was talking to like. You know, uh, a Philly fan, a guy who covers the, the Sixers, and he had a conversation with Nick Nurse. It was cool. We we talked about this a bit offline, how like who we were talking about, and uh, it's the culture shift that Nick Nurse has brought, and he's ultimately said to that team that the ball is and is going to be in Maxi's hands, and it's not so much like obviously the departure of James. We're going to talk about it a bit, like, but it's also the fact that he's kind of taken on the reins and realized now that. Without any, without looking over his shoulder, he has the ability to create for other guys, and and we've always seen him mostly as a really great scoring threat. But what he's doing right now is setting up other guys and putting them in position to be successful. Yeah. Like you're seeing guys like Tobias Harris playing really well, so you're seeing like a a, a better field game from from Maxi this year, and like now you get to see like the best parts about his 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 game. So it's also a natural progression when you when you get the ball in your hand. You're just gonna be able to do so much more. His confidence is un- unreal right now, too. Oh yeah, he he just looks like way more polished than I think what initially you would have thought coming out of the draft. And you know, yeah, he's he's a guy I think is really he embodies the MIP. You know, taken late in the draft. You know, you had a decent first year, second year really what went really well for him. But now it's like, man, yeah, he's he's definitely. I'd be surprised if he's not an all-star this year. 
the way he yeah, the game. I agree. Yeah, I mean, he, he's playing on a superstar level right now, to be honest, averaging 28, yeah. 5, and 7. Yeah. Like, that's that's not even like, he's not even at a contention of just MIP. I'm not saying he's a contention of MVP, but it's kind of like how John Morant won the MIP award. Like, he just took that much of a step up. For sure. For sure. But Tyrese Maxey is a guy where, like, you're not necessarily expecting him. Because, like, I mean, we can all agree. I think Jaw kind of. I don't want to say killed the award, but kind of. He, he kind of did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he kind of did. He kind of did kill the award. The fact that we're giving it to a third, uh, to a you know, a third year player is insane because this is typically guys who've been in the league for a while, and then you kind of see like their, you know, their assert their their ascension mm-hmm. after a while they've been in the league. But screw it, man! Like Maxi's Matt, his his step up from last year is just another level. Right? Yeah. Like that's and. And I think that also speaks to the talent that's coming into the league. Like, Jaw broke the award simply because, like, the step that he took from year two to year three was absolutely insane. Oh, for And sure. right now, Maxi's doing the exact same thing where he's putting a 50 ball and he's averaging almost 30 points a game on a team that's, you know, second in the East. I mean, it's it's really hard to fight against that case. And you know what's even more beautiful? It was, like, 50 primarily on buckets. I think he yeah. shot he shot less than 10 free throws. But yeah, Maxi, Maxi is one of the ones. Who's another, you know, Ruben? I, I'm curious. How are you feeling overall with like Scotty so far in the season? Because he's another guy I think you could throw oh. into this. But man, yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, let's go. I was gonna say Scotty would probably be my second guy in this conversation. I mean, the only reason this season is fun for me to watch is the is again the resurgence or the ascension of Scotty after he had like a sophomore slump year. He didn't get really, really get to start last year on a healthy note. Um, I think he was dealt a bad hand last year, and now this year, like you're seeing that. Quite frankly, I know this is a bit of a hot take, but I'd say he's a better overall player than Pascal. Like in terms of his ability to impact both ends of the floor, I think he's just a much more uh, sound. It's just and with his athleticism and his size and his strength, like he's just naturally a better guy on the low post, like he's naturally a better playmaker because he started out playing point guard in, in high school and college. And Pascal had to develop his game to get to that point. Like we all knew when he came in that he was just a rim runner mm. for about two to three years until he, was a spin he won most improved. Yeah. He was, yeah. There you go. Right. <laughs> like, but uh, it's unguardable to be fair, but sure, I mean, sure. he, in his third year, he wins, you know, actually, yeah. In a fourth year, he wins, um, MIP, right? Oh, no, no, the third year here won MIP. So if anything, Pascal might have broken. Yeah, yeah, he he was his third year, but he wasn't an all star that year or anything like that. But, um, yeah, when it's all said and done, like Scotty's clearly the the franchise cornerstone after a month, and even in games when he's struggling with his shot, he's able to impact the game other ways, and that's what you want from your true superstar franchise cornerstone player. Right, you see guys like Giannis or you know all these other players who can impact a game without scoring. That's what Scotty does, right? So, I think even after a game like this against Milwaukee, it makes it all the more apparent that you know the front office has to build around around Scotty oh, moving forward. I mean, if you get the proper team around Scotty, I it's like an easy twenty five, ten, and six. Those yeah. that's the kind of Scotty numbers he can put up for sure. Hashtag spacing. That's the most important thing in the league today, and the Raptors have none of that shit. Oh my man. god! I mean, today was kind of evident of that. But I mean, you were missing. You were missing uh, Gary Trent and OG. OG. Yeah, OG's OG's obviously massive because he's like your best perimeter defender. And without Giannis there, you'd probably plug OG on Dame. And OG's OG's defensive numbers against Stars this year has been insane. Oh yeah, OG's been OG's been locked up this year. Sure. Yeah, I think I would probably put him as a defense player of the year. If only the Raptors had a better record this year so far. No doubt. No doubt. Another person I feel like I want to give some flowers to, man, Cam Thomas, bro. He's been so yeah. much fun to watch this year. You know, he's another bucket in a long line of these Oak Hill products. Because, I mean, you know, you got Mello, Brandon Jennings, Jerry Stackhouse, KD, the greatest of all time, Steve Blake. You know, Cam Thomas is right, right up there with those guys. So, Steve Blake. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to throw that in there. More. Oh, hey, a lot of dogs there. <laughs> a lot of dogs. 
But uh, Cam Thomas, I feel like <laughs> oh, Timothy yeah. Lowell White Cabarro. TLC. Holy oh my god. My goodness. But yeah, Cam Thomas, he's like he's just kind of forced his way into like outside of just being the idea of a six man because if you're averaging twenty seven four and four with a like you know the the three points not there, we know that's not his game. But overall, like some pretty solid like lines, I mean it's it's been really fun to watch for sure. And when you look at like the Nets as a whole, you know, we haven't seen Mikel really return to form with being like the number one kind of option. But you don't really need that from him when you got Cam Thomas on the floor. But I mean overall that Nets team has been really fun to watch. It it just sucks that they're going through some injuries right now, but yeah, Cam. Whew, man. To be honest, to be honest, if he doesn't regress, like with the numbers he's putting up, he probably could win MIP. Even though, you know, yeah. we see Tyrese Maxi making the leap, like Cam Thomas is putting up the numbers like we thought he was only putting up for a moment last year, but he's like been putting up the numbers like to start the season this year. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Your Hooper. Yeah. Oh yeah. I he mean, is. Cam Thomas probably lives on the on the block away from uh what's it called? Oh my gosh. It's totally it. Rucker. Probably lives a block away from there. Oh yeah. He's <laughs> probably there every day when he's not playing. For sure. Anybody else you want to get some MIP love to Chin? You know, Cam Reddish? No, I don't got no one. I man. Cam Reddish. Hey man. Jesus, Cam no, Reddish is I, I getting think, real minutes. I think right now, until what's we Evan see Fournier else in doing? The season, He's got his ass on that fucking bench. Oh, Cam Reddish still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I will give one. I will give another shout. Out. I know he was in the conversation during Jaws' year, but Desmond Bain. I think just the way he's playing. I know the team is not great right now, but um, every year he's improving slowly and steadily. So. Uh, I mean, he's he's 13th in the league in scoring at the moment. So, you know, got to give that guy some love because he's playing really well right now, too. Mm-hmm, for sure. Another guy, I guess the last person I'll mention, AP. Alfred Shingun, you know, he's... I think he's, like, one of the primary reasons that the Rockets are looking as good as they are. You know, they're finally using him as, like, kind of like a Jokic where his hand's on the ball primarily... And then everybody else is kind of feeding off of him. So that's been really, really amazing to watch so far on the season, for sure. All right, DPOY. Y'all think there's a... OG Ananobi. OG? (laughs) OG Ananobi. For me, I I think I got to go with Rudy. You know, he's he's back in form. Yeah, Rudy's been good. Best defender on the best team at the moment. You know, he's, he's dogging. Looks like Christian's Wi-Fi is pooping out again. All good. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with the Rudy pick. He's been really good, man. Yeah, think, uh, and there hasn't really been anyone to really challenge him, in a sense. Yeah. No, I mean, I think, like, just in terms of impact, I mean, they, they found a way to finally make it work. Hey, it's, the change can still come. Definitely. Yeah. You know I who think, I think? Oh, sorry, oh, yeah. No, I, I was I was gonna mention someone else. Who, 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 what are we gonna say? I was I was gonna say Porzingis deserves some love in that conversation at the moment. Mm, is that what you yeah, were gonna say, Chin? Okay. No, no, I actually have a sleeper pick that I think you know is unlikely, but if he was on the right team, would see some love for this. Is a Sar Thompson man? A, oh, he's, he's really averaging real. one. I don't Bro. know. If he's average, He's almost averaging two steals, two blocks a game. Asar is a pro- fucking opinion, dog, yo! Holy! Like, if there's no like, Wemby or no Chet, Asar is like looked at as like the greatest thing since sliced bread. Honestly, he's averaging like a double double with two blo- like almost two blocks and two steals. He's like, like six in the league in I, rebounds I right now. I think. Yeah, I think at one point he was just behind Jokic, if I'm not mistaken. He might he might have gone down since then, but he's he's been a league leader in blocks or not blocks, sorry, in assists or rebound. Fuck. The only thing is like, 
you know, I respect that he's willing to shoot the three, but you know, at 16%, that's not really should be something you rely on. But no, he, he's, you know, there's, there's one tried and true, like sort of basketball saying you could describe Osar Thompson as, you know, just plays the game the right way, you know? Well, no, when it comes to DPY, yeah, I feel like it's absolutely. Rudy's right now. It's not really anybody else's, right? Right. Well, it's, hard to, it's hard to argue that it's anybody else's just based on his defensive impact at the moment. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. I, I could see someone like Miles Turner finally making an emergence as like a candidate for that award. I think if the Pacers keep, like, fuck, I guess their pace up, fuck, they, uh, they look like a good candidate in terms of winning because I, I think right now they're also at eight and three in the East, and Miles Turner has been a, like a substantial big part yeah, of that. They defense, just beat but... the they just beat the Sixers yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the only thing with them is like they have to have at least a decent defense, and with how everybody's sort of sure. labeling them as like the next six seconds or less offense, like a la like Phoenix when they were running it. Uh, we, we we know the defense wasn't the, the primary focus for them. So, you know, hopefully they can get it. Cause yeah, I, I think this is sort of the first year where Miles Turner is looked at as like, like a consensus uh, top tier, like center. I feel, I feel like he's gone very underrated the past few years. That's, That's just me. Or do y'all feel the same? Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, I, I think he's on a level of like emerging as one of the next players. Like, I think it's been talked about a lot. And I think, to be honest, like when you kind of see how much usage he actually gets and how many minutes he gets a game, he's not even really at a level where like he gets to like be as impactful yeah. as I think he could be. Well, it's health and opportunity, right? I think it's those two things. That together. too. So I think like I think this season is probably one where hopefully like fingers crossed the consistency is there. Because like there's no doubt that he has the ability to be a DPOY candidate. It's just really consistency and health. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah. Cause yeah, he's he's a guy that he's led the the leak in blocks like twice so far, I think, right? During yeah. his career. So definitely definitely one of them ones. Alrighty. Rookie of the year. Are, are we saying Wemby for sure? Or, you know, are y'all team chat? How y'all feeling about this? Yeah, I got, I got Wemby. I don't, I, don't, I don't think it's close at the moment. That's what I think. Too. I'm team Asar. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, man. I'm team Brandon Bill. Yo, no, Cam. What? First, first, first week of the season, Brandon. <laughs> You can't tell me Brandon Miller wasn't the best looking oh. rookie, yo. But that one. I mean, he's all right. <laughs> Brandon Miller was genuinely the he's first nice. week. Is he killer. nice? No, he he is nice. He is nice. No, but Asar is, Asar is one of them ones. Oh, poopy wife. Asar, Asar, Asar is real. Brandon Miller had a really good run. I think, uh, you know, obviously Chet is having a hell of a, you know, he's he's a guy who's averaging 50, 40, 90. Yep. I mean, I can't remember the last time a rookie had those stats to finish a season. I'm not sure Chet's going to finish there, but, like, to have that kind of start is impressive too, right? Like, you know, what are his stats currently at 57 and, and two? And he's averaging what? How many? Two and a half. Two, yeah, it's like two three stocks a game. a game. Yeah, so he's playing well, but it's just hard. I mean, that's the thing, too, right? Like, we look at the rookie of the year race, and we might <clears throat> we might look at wins and losses and impact on the wins and losses as something as a key performance indicator between, you know, Wemby and Chet. And so, you know, for me, obviously, I would go with Wemby just because of, in terms of his individual performance, it's on another level. But Chet is playing, and any other in any other year, you'd probably look him as look at him as a rookie of the year candidate. No but he's also contributing to wins. Again, his team is better. The, the the talent around him is much better, and but he's supplementary to that. So, 
it might be worth looking into. I think that might be one of the conversations as we get closer to the award year to um you know to the end of the season when they start awarding rookie of the year. Yeah, I feel like Wemby is you know, he's doing as good as he can with his situation. Because, you know, Jeremy Sohan, cool, you know, a little fire hygiene, Swiss Army knife, but he's not a PG. And that's why I think, no. you know, if there is a team that I think would look to make like a decent sized move, it's the Spurs. And there's a guy, maybe a couple guys I think they could like lock their eyes in on and potentially get number one, which is probably the most realistic one. I feel like Markel Fultz would do bits on that team. You know, he's a guy that's a really solid point guard. Definitely won't reach the heights of what would expected of him, but that's not his fault. But overall, when he's been healthy, when he's been contributing on the floor, it's been nothing but positive when it comes to the Orlando Magic. And even them looking at how the Magic set up, you know, you have Cole Anthony, you have Anthony Black, you got Jet Howard. There's a lot of young guards that kind of fit the timeline a bit better. Because Mark Hill, I think he's, what, 25, 26? So he's, like, maybe just on the cusp of it. But you put him on that Wemby team, could be doing could be doing nasty things. Another guy, you know, I don't know if he's going to get traded or, like, just going to be the odd man out of that team. But, man, Josh Giddy pairing with Wemby? Woo! That sounds like, like, must-see TV to me. And, you know, when you look at, like, when it comes to the Thunder... You know, I think he's almost the one that falls out in a sense when it comes to guys they're going to have to pay in the near future because, you know, Shea's on his deal. Jalen Williams is for sure going to get a bag. Chet's for sure going to get a bag. Giddy, I feel like, is a guy that just might tail off and just be, you know, like I said, the odd man out because a lot of the things he does is valuable for sure. But you look at what Shea's able to do, the gravity he commands and you know, as well as obviously all the draft capital they have, you know, it's it's not too, I don't want to say too hard because, you know, hitting on the draft is hard, but, you know, it's not too bad to find another guy that, like, is as solid as it comes, like, to a guy like Giddy. So I think you put Giddy on the Spurs, when we might, because I, I forgot what the stat was, but, you know, there's like a stat or something where you look at, like, the potential points or whatever, but. yeah. When you just look at like the the passes that Sohan's putting out, it's more like he I don't know if this makes any sense, but his passes look more like the second pass if that makes sense. It looks more like the swingman kind of pass, but you know, I, that's not to say he can't develop into that, but I just think Wemby would be it be more beneficial to have like a pure point guard, you know what I mean? Yeah. Man. I, I just I just love watching him play. It's just Bro, crazy. Oh, yes. It's he's, just, he's so fucking good. I'm just, you know, you explaining that, it's just like, damn, like, he can make something out of nothing. And for a rookie to be able to do what he's doing and the confidence that he's exuding, like, it's just, he's just, he's on a whole nother level, man. I think it's just, you watch him and you're like, because it's so interesting to watch because we've never seen anyone like him before. Definitely. And I think that's what's so intriguing about, you know, his style of play. Wemby, ooh. He can be a guy that jumps up to like 25 and 12 next year. Like, if he's this good right now, man. Rookie of the year is yeah. only the beginning. Yeah, 25 and 12, I think is, I think it's doable. I think That feels like his career even. averages. Potentially, yeah. yeah. I feel like that. Alrighty. MVP. Last last award or the major awards, and we got a couple fun ones. MVP. This is one that I feel like is 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 one that's still very open. I'd say you know we've talked about the Rookie of the Year, DPOY, MIP. Those ones feel like at the moment is pretty solidified, but MVP is one where it's like I think there's still a lot of wiggle room for guys. But how are you guys landing on this? Like this race at the moment. Uh, I think it's, I think it's Jokic running away with it at the moment. Okay. I don't think it's close to be honest. Oh, um, I quickly looked at his stats and I think he was averaging 30, 13 or something 
an eight. Those are those are definitely MVP level numbers. I, I just don't, I just don't think that there's I don't think it's close right now. Uh, I mean, obviously, if if <clears throat> the Celtics pull away, I'll give Tatum a little bit more love. Um, Luca's having an insane year too, no doubt. But um, and Joel, Joel too. Like I, I can't forget about Joel and the hot start he's had. I mean, the other night, what did he have? Forty and twelve or something like that. Yeah. Just absolutely bonkers. <laughs> but kind of shit the bed today, though. Yeah, I mean, statistically, impact like there. It's hard to 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 deny Jokic at this point after we gave like the pity MVP to Joel last year when quite frankly it should have been Jokic's, uh, and not to say that Joel didn't it didn't um, didn't deserve it, but you know there's a lot of the conversation was voters fatigue right like mm-hmm. you know you don't want to always want to give it to the same guy over and over again and I think LeBron felt some of that and which I think you know he should have won two or three more MVPs during his time in the league. But, <clears throat> yeah, I think it's Jokic's. I don't know if it's really close, in my opinion. What uh, what seed were the Nuggets yeah, during Jokic's first MVP? Or, like, wasn't there wasn't there an MVP? Because Russ is the last one, I or the firm one I know for sure, to where they weren't, like, a top echelon-like team, but he still won MVP. Was that the case for Jokic, too? For his first one? Let's quickly take a look. Because that's that's how I'm going to lean I into it. I personally think they were a top three team. Were they still top three? Yeah, I three? think they were. And was that not yeah, the I think year the that Denver, uh, Jamal yeah. was injured? His first one? That sounds right. Because, yeah, he went... No, no. Yeah, they were, sec- they were second in the Northwest. They were 47 and 25 and... And they lost in the conference semis to the Suns in the what second was, round. Wait, they were 47 and 25. What was that in the conference? If I'm not mistaken. Um, hold on a second. Yeah, Ruben's double checking here, but for me, you know, I, I feel like, yeah, Jokic has definitely put his paws on it initially. But man. They were third in the West. They're still third? That's not terrible. Yeah. Luca, though. I mean that's no. I mean that's that's like in your top three. That's yeah. If the if the Mavs finish top three, I think Luca is for sure looking at his first MVP of potentially many. Because even when you look at it, he's had not only the stats to back it up, but he's had a lot of MVP moments. I mean, you know, he's had what two game winners on the year already. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. The year you're thinking of is actually the 22 year when they were 48 and 34 and they finished sixth in the conference. But I think that year was sort of like it was a toss up considering the fact that, you know, they were 14 games over 500. That, that was year. his that was his first MVP though, right? That was his second one. The second one? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, but I feel like his long. his numbers were so gaudy compared to everybody else's. But... Yeah, that year. Yeah, but either way, I I feel like for me personally, I think it's I think Luca's the not the front runner because I think yeah I definitely feel like right now Jokic is, I mean they're doing this also without Jamal Murray, you know yeah they've only lost like I don't think they've lost since uh, the Timberwolves game right. No. Yeah, damn. I don't think so. But yeah, for for me, I think Luca's carved out a lot of. Not only just MVP stats, but, you know, he's had a lot of those moments as well so far this season. But, man, it's it's going to be a dope race this year for sure. All right. We didn't mention, we didn't talk about this earlier, but speaking of uh, races and, you know, the fact that the Nuggets have done very well without Jamal Murray. What is your guys' outlook on the Clippers so far with the... Uh, the less than satisfactory beginning that they've had in the James Harden era. Because they're what, 0 and 5? Yeah, they have not won a game. I think since. they're now 0 and 6. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, what, what do you think, Chin? Because, like, I have I have different thought about them. But, like, I, I'm genuinely mm-hmm. curious to know what you think about this team. Even before the Harden trade. 
I mean, before the Harden trade, I think Paul George was looking much more aggressive. And I think they're just trying to honestly figure out what this team looks like on the floor. And there's been a lot of criticism that I think I agree with that there's just not a world where Westbrook and Harden can be playing like overlap, like constant overlapping minutes together. I think there has to be a way that James Harden becomes the facilitator on the team. I don't think at this point in his career, to be completely honest, that he's a great off ball player just because he's not one to really, you know, space the floor or be proactive about spacing the floor. Like someone like Steph Curry, for example, right. Who can play off the ball. Um, and he demands the ball in his hands, but it doesn't mean he's going to be the James Harden that takes all the shots. It's just the matter of being the James Harden that starts the play and finishes and sometimes finishes the play. Whereas I think Westbrook wants to be that same player too. But thing is Westbrook does not really allow for teams to garner interest in him being on the floor, like in terms of guarding him, like people will play a, a, a man-to-man defense when Westbrook's on the floor because one man can handle him nowadays. Right. And Harden's just going to stand there. PG's going to wait for the shot. Kawhi's going to wait for the shot. And I think they're just like, they don't really have a way to play actively right now. They look they look slow. But I do think they're going to turn turn out for the better. They're, they're just too good of a team to, to see a bad season with this roster. Definitely. I wholly agree with that. You know, Ty Lu said, give him 10 games. But I think you got to give them something like 20. Because I, I think the first yeah. thing I've noticed through the first few games is that the rotations have been a little wonky. Like, I don't know if y'all saw, what was the, the was it the Grizzlies game? Or whatever game, there was like a close, uh, like kind of in the clutch time. And then Russell Westbrook got subbed out for James Harden. And, you know, I feel like Ty Lue was doing that mainly just to see how he could operate within that situation, but you know, I, I think there's a lot of meshing that needs to happen, and that's why I'm saying you give him 20 games. Because yeah, I, I agree. James Harden, it's like the idea is a lot better than what you've gotten so far, and you know, he just plays a very, very lackadaisical basketball. I guess is the way I'd put it. You know, he he plays like a guy that isn't expecting to have much responsibility outside of like you know being the point of attack and play making from that kind of thing but yeah I, I think how they need to operate is yeah they need to offset those minutes a lot better but they just need to play through Kawhi and PG and then let James and Russ kind of get theirs out of that but you know they'll figure it out for sure oh, how are you thinking about it Ruben so, like, it's a lot to unpack, but, <clears throat> like, I kind of initially said that the Clippers, in terms of their depth, like, I thought that this team was going to be pretty solid, and it, it was heading in that right direction, and, but I think, regardless, this team has a lot to figure out, because there's so many moving parts and pieces constantly every season, they, they, there hasn't been any real stability other than Tyron Liu, PG, and Kawhi every season. Even Kawhi so has been think like a little that. iffy at times. Well, yeah, because the health, right? The health, and even with PG, like the health, like health is like they've they've lacked consistency and stability, and quite frankly, it's just always been a curse within that that franchise. That you know, your Chris Paul, you know, getting hurt, Blake Griffin getting hurt, and you can go all the way back to like their special players like Sean Livingston, and you know that deadly injury before finding his way to the to Golden State. It just <clears throat> there's a history where this team, this franchise just seems to struggle with injuries and health. And so, you know, <clears throat> I had said that this team was going to be, you know, a top four, top five, potentially. I thought they were going to be a contender right out, right out the gate. And so, and then we had touched on this a bit when James got traded there. I said, like, this team, I think, from a talent perspective, is as good as it gets on the floor. But in terms of fit, it's going to be really difficult for them to figure out. And we talked about this too, DJ. We were like... Okay, so who's going to be the guy that comes off the bench? Who's going to be the guy that can run with the bench unit to give them positive minutes on the bench? Considering this, despite, you know, trading Robert Covington, trading all the other guys that they did, they still have some form of depth on this roster. 
you know, whether it's Norman Powell, Terrence Mann, excuse me, um, you know, Bones Highland, uh, obviously Plumlee's up with injury for a little bit. You know, this team still has pieces to work with, and <clears throat> I think it's going to take a lot of figuring out. I still think with James that this team is very capable of, of ending up in the top six. Um, and I think a lot of it falls, quite frankly, on Tyron Liu, really on, like, lineup utilization. I think there has to be some sort of system set in place when all four of those guys are on the floor because right now it looks like a free-for-all on the court. And I get it. They probably haven't had enough practice time to get in the court and really mesh and to really understand where guys want to be in tendencies and stuff like that. But they have to figure it out. Like, they have to figure out some sort of something, some sort of calling card, because right now that those four with Zubach, there's not enough spacing for it to be effective, number one. Number two, all guys need the ball, and really PG, in my opinion, is pretty much the only guy who's really efficient without the ball. Mm. Right, and obviously a guy like Zubach can't space mm-hmm. the floor, and so, you know, a lot of the same problem that problems that Toronto has, but they just have better players. But again, they're 0-5, 0-6 in this run. And James isn't playing at game game shape. Like, he's certainly not in shape right now. He's certainly not ready to play, like, 30 to 36 minutes a, a night. So I think it's... I would give this team maybe 10 more games, 10, 15 more games before I start hitting the panic button. Because it's still fairly early into the season. I think they got to figure things out. And I think this team, in terms of its talent, is too good not to figure it out. But why... Yeah, but maybe in the next 15, 20 games, if they still look like this and they're way below 500, then I'm going to start hitting the panic button because, you know, there's only, you know, you said it in our chat offline with with, with regarding to the Raptors game, but sometimes it's too little too late. And, um, you know, I think this team needs to, I think a lot of it it falls on Tyron Lue, quite frankly. Yeah. But I I think these can still be contenders, though. Because how do you have a team, like, I know, like, in terms of fit, that's a problem. But in terms of, on like, on-court talent, James, Russ, Kawhi, and PG on any given night is as good as any any team that you're going to see on the floor. It's just a matter of fit, yeah, and a that, lot of the times it comes down to the coach. I agree. Yeah, you just got to give him some time. Yeah. And some sacrifice, too. There needs to be a little bit of sacrifice. True. Hey, Clippers got Daniel Tice, so all is well. Yeah, I that that was actually a pretty good backup budget. That's a sneaky. That could be a sneaky good one when you're like looking at who's gonna take over the Plumlee minutes because you know solid dude stretches the floor as well. But yeah, I mean, I mean, it's just you. I mean, we've seen it. The Bucks are struggling, and it's a that. The Bucs are struggling, and it's evidence that it's hard to really implement these high usage guys into systems where there's already like nucleuses and guys who are your primary like ball handlers. So, you know, it'll take a while to gel, but when it does, man, it's going to be nasty. Mm-hmm. All right, last little segment before we sign off here because, you know, Ruben's got to get to some meetings. Who would y'all say has been the biggest surprise this year? Could be a positive, could be a negative. Maybe you got multiples, but, you know, player, team, whatever. Everything's fair game here. What do you guys think has been the biggest surprise of the season so far? I think it's got to be Minnesota, honestly. Like, I'm not saying I didn't expect them to eventually be a good team, but they've really come out the gate and shown that they can be a team together. Like, they're playing really really great basketball and they look like a real team they're really fun to and i think and, and the fact that sorry to I, I, you think, off, the I think i think they're, they're getting it stay. done on the defensive end too yeah, i thought their calling card would be offense well sorry continue my bad no i, I mean it's just like you see players like cat kind of get in a lot of ridicule for not being on that level that he could be but he's really starting to form his own and understand how to play with rudy more and I think it's the same with Rudy, where he's really understanding how to contribute to. Like Rudy tonight, okay, well, they lost tonight. It's not a good example. But Rudy tonight, and I think a lot of nights, is only putting up maybe four to ten points. But he's grabbing all the rebounds, and he's he's putting up the blocks. He's really closing in the paint. And like that's kind of what you want from Rudy Gobert when he's playing beside two 
heavily offensive players to like relieve those players on the defensive side so that when you know they go to play defense they have that energy to play on the offensive side and i i mean ant looks like honestly like if he could continue to be the way he is this season he's playing at a like sub mvp level as well honestly he's definitely like looking like an all nba guy this year yeah yeah what about you rube yeah houston oh yeah, houston. yeah. talk about three. it I mean, like, yeah i i said they were gonna be shite bro so I mean, like obviously I'm, I'm eating. You know, I said the same thing about Minnesota too, right? Like I, these are two teams that I didn't see doing very well. And um, you know, sometimes I forget that number one, you know, the Timberwolves lacked a lot of good health last year, and I think again, stability is really important. They didn't open the season with um, with Jaden McDaniels, but he's come onto his own, starting choking out guys and starting fights. But you know. <laughs> um, Timberwolves look good, man, and 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 the Ant ascension is real. But the Houston Rockets, yeah, like that—that that was to me the most surprising thing because I didn't realize, of course, like when you look at a team like Toronto and you have Fred on that guy uh, on that team, and you know you're asking him to be the only floor spacer, and then you bring him onto a team like Houston where they have multiple guys who can space the floor. I mean, just the fit itself, like, it seems like very much like Fred is the Lonzo Ball of what Chicago was a couple of years ago, where Fred is able to get guys in control. He's able to, I mean, his shooting splits and his shooting numbers haven't been great, but sometimes it takes that shift in culture. You know, you don't have a guy like, um, you know, Kevin Porter Jr. in your locker room anymore throwing stuff at people. Yeah. But you got Fred in there who's leading the way and, and Dylan Brooks who's obviously brought a lot of confidence on the floor and it feels like when you got a guy like Dylan Brooks, you could say the same thing about a guy like Draymond. You could say the same thing about a guy like Pat Bev. Is when you guys have when you have guys like this on your side, you know, you feel a lot more comfortable on the floor. You can feel a lot more confident. You feel like there's makes gonna, you, you lock know, a guy in more, especially you, on the defense. Makes you end. lock in, yeah, yeah. exactly. And Alperin Sangoon, like his his ascension, he's been playing really well. He's a guy that I think I would add in terms of individuals who's been surprising. Like he looks like a top ten center right now in the league. So I think everything is clicking, and and we forget that you know, despite all the stuff, you know. Basketball, strictly, Emi Udoka is still one of the better basketball minds in the league, right? So, uh, I, yeah, True. I, you know, very well that's said. off to those very guys, well man. They're said. playing good. Yeah. For me, we got to get out of here in a bit. I think it's just how bad the Pistons and the Trailblazers have been because, you know, I was under the impression that these would be like those fun to watch, you know, bad teams, but it's not even like, and it's like the the Trailblazers especially has been very like lackluster, but I think just the main reason for that is a lot of injuries. You know, Anthony Simons goes out early in the year. Can't wait to see him back. Scoot, you know, not only is he looking a little rough, but you know now he's dealing with an injury. The Pistons though is weird because like, man, Cade looks great, but he just turns over the ball so often. <laughs> Like, it's gone to the point where, could y'all have really imagined Killian Hayes being as good as he's been this year? Like, he's no. looking like I mean, a guy that, like, could potentially get a second contract right now. Yeah, well, he played really well to end last year. and I Yeah, think, uh, true. Yeah, the momentum carried in. He looks like a real NBA player now. Like, he, mm -hmm. uh... Yeah, him and, him and Malachi Flynn have been surprisingly good <laughs> NBA players this year, so... That's a, that's a good that's yeah. a good deep cut right there yeah yeah he's not gonna be he's not gonna be learning chinese just yet nah he's on <laughs> that's cool he's on the watch list <laughs> but <Dong Tigers. laughs> guan might want to hold off on the call for a bit man yeah that's a great place to end there y'all got any last things to get out uh cleveland has been surprisingly bad i thought they were yeah. gonna be a top three i said it last last two pods ago i was like cleveland's gonna be top three over i think over milwaukee and potentially over the 76ers that could and be, uh, clearly i was wrong bro, yeah. that could be a team where if they get something like, this, like a zach levy no nah, maybe not a fire sale but just oh, a bit lunch, a little too no nah, the bulls look like they're about to have have a fire sale though 
Yeah, but we said we were gonna. We already said that we were gonna blow that team up True. when we did True. our rankings. So, goddamn, screw the Bulls. I don't. Yeah, I don't think the Cavs need to blow it up, but you know, it's not looking fruitful for a Donovan Mitchell extension at the moment. <laughs> I just want them to fire sale it so we, we have, uh, Toronto has another chance of saying we 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 got close to the finish line, and then Donovan Mitchell goes someone else somewhere else. Mm. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's the goodest place to end it there alrighty all we appreciate you tuning into this episode till next time stay safe stay blessed see y'all soon black shots black shots black shots black shots pod 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 oh, oh. 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 oh.